Welcome to Expedition Self on Ohm Times Radio with lifelong learner, entrepreneur, and creator of the worlds of Expedition Self, Sam Parado. Sam shares four decades of studying, guiding, and teaching how to go inside so we can build an incredibly powerful, dynamic, and validating relationship with the self. Expedition Self is laced with stellar, unexpected insights about what it means to be human. Listen now and ignite your self-development process with Sam Parado. Well, hello. Welcome to this week's show on Expedition Self. I'm Sam Parado. Did I already say that? Now all of a sudden I hear my name so much I think, did I say it four times? Anyway, I'm so pleased to have you with me uh, to talk about all things growth work and what it really, really means to go inside. This week's show, um, our topic is what really matters. But before I get into that, I have some news to share with you today. And uh, as of Today's show, I will have recorded 62 live hours with all of you. And (laughs) like 62, that's a a ton, right? When you think about it, um, you know, if you did one a month, it would be like five years worth. But anyway, um, I've got to say I'm I'm pretty uh, pleased as punch with myself. And I'm going to be uh, editing the shows and uh, shaping them into a book over the coming months. So there's no working title right now, but I I think it's definitely going to have something to do with what uh, more really means in somebody's lifetime. (laughs) 62 shows. Wow. (laughs) Well, when I started, I could barely get through one of them. And you know, you might say, oh, you know, your talk all the time for a living. Why would this, this thing be such a big deal? Um, but the biggest feeling that was super hard to deal with was the sitting at, at my desk and talking <laughs> with nobody to talk to, really. I couldn't see anybody or responses or whatever for the whole hour. And I just felt so incredibly lonely. And even though it was a call, um, even though it was like a call-in show, right, Um a lot of times there were no call-ins or <laughs> nobody did. in the early shows. If you listen to them, you'll hear me say, okay, anybody could call and he wants to. And I'd, I'd just be there like, you know, talking, of course, about my favorite subject for a whole 60 minutes. I mean, when break time came where the ads came, I'd be like, oh, okay, I get two minutes to just like kind of regroup. But when I look back now, I can see that it, it took me to one of the core inner places where I have a wound. And and that is in the area of loneliness and being alone. And the, you know, the feeling uh, like I wasn't really understood growing up and I, I didn't quite fit, right? Not being able to get out what was happening inside of me to the people who would have been interested or to not understanding what was happening around me that led to so much confusion inside and being left to deal with that confusion without having any understanding of it felt lonely also. And of course, then the the suffering that I was going through because I, I didn't know the words. I didn't even know how to be vulnerable. I didn't know how to share, you know, what it was really like to be inside of me. And, and so all, all of that would show up at the desk with me and have a coffee each week at five o'clock on Wednesdays, um, you know, and I'd sit here and try to do my show. So I would cry before it and I'd after, after it. And then, of course, I'd feel this incredible feeling of relief, uh, you know, after it was over, because I'd have a couple of days with no pressure, you know, before I had to do the next one. I actually think that this is a very real part of being human is this kind of unaware, slightly unaware, unconscious, but knowing sense that we avoid things that are going to bring up that kind of visceral discomfort. Uh, And and of course, when I was committed to do it, I just had to go towards the discomfort. So I couldn't, you know, convince myself or create anything where I could avoid it. And, And so that feeling of loneliness, it was, unbeknownst to me, in my way of wanting to reach out, re- or to reach a wider group of people, right? It, it 
you can even think it played a role in why I like to facilitate in groups where I can get to know people and see their faces and feel that shared connection, right? And and it 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 probably had something to do with why I kept things the same in terms of my work all these years. And I and and I didn't know it. I I truly I didn't recognize that part of what was comfortable about my eight to five work had to do with avoiding feeling lonely. So this opportunity to do this show helped me begin to bust this up. And, and really it's it's a lot, you probably have all done this yourself where you just take something on you because you want it, but you have no idea. You have no idea what it's actually gonna make contact with or touch. And I did not know I would be busting it up until I started to put words around it and realized that I was feeling this loneliness week after week. And oh, <laughs> thank goodness, it slowly, it gave way. And I, I began to feel something else. And that something else was relief. And it's just like some peace, right? Some sense of ease about it. Because each week, I get to talk about something that I actually do think about 24-7 right, in some capacity or another. So something that I had been thinking about 24-7 for like 40 years, you know, I, I now got, I got to write it down, you know, shape my, my agenda. I got to let it rip. <laughs> I got to spew it across my lips and let my vocal cords like vibrate with all of that personal interest and intrigue and intention that lives in my belly each and every day. And and honestly, it just started to feel really, really good. <laughs> you know, I covered emotions and communication, how the growth process works, what is being, how, how to um, be and think about relationships and all ways and what ways of being can you develop and connecting to your inner child, uh, developing your creativity, engaging in creative visualization, like working in the body, all of it, like all of it, I got to download my life's work in 62 episodes. I got to do that. I, I hope all of you have an opportunity to do something like this in your life, because it was really, really cathartic. And of course, something happened along the way as that occurred, which is that new material or new perspective started to eke its way into my psyche. So the original models of growth, well, they began to change. And I'd see where it didn't quite capture the totality, you know, of what I thought a human being was going through or needing, right? I'd get to see gaps and uh, pockets of, oh, that doesn't actually look the same way to me now. And so this, this metamorphosis, this transformation, it kind of, it just happened as I emptied, as I emptied my, my nest of thoughts and experiences. So I remember the show where I talked about uh, walking to the edge of myself and realizing there was something beyond me, right? Where I actually started to consider that <laughs> there was an other. Well, doing this show, has helped me to walk to the edge of already built ideas and experiences and, and realize that I've actually reached the edge. And, you know, it's, it's not an uncommon thing for people to regurgitate the same thoughts over and over and over. And the older they get, the more the stories just, you know, sound like the same thing because they get perfected. But really transformation and growth work, what it, what it does is it, it opens up the new. And so this show actually uh, got to do that. And so with that, I mentioned that I, I had something to share. I have reached a moment where I need to take a break uh, just for a couple of months. And I will be back on air in January of 2023. And I'm going to actually try a different time slot uh, because I'm still invested in having callers, lots of callers call in. Um, and that'll be on Tuesday evenings at 8 p.m. Uh, with the hopes that more people will call and talk about their growth process. 
And I'm also going to be doing interviews with people who just want to talk about how they're engaging with their own development. And I'm going to do some exclusive relationship building shows where you can bring another person. It can be anyone, like your significant other, your sibling, your child, right, can come on air and we'll talk through what there is to explore. And lastly, I'll be doing some interviews with other people who are teachers in this genre. You know, I did one of those this year um, with Agape uh, Stasinopoulos. That's a mouthful. I always worry I'm going to screw that up. Um, and so it should offer a great variety for those of you who stick around uh, and are fellow seekers with me. And we'll be airing um, pre-recorded ones, the ones of the 62 between now and then. So it's a good time. If you actually have some curiosity, go back and listen to some. So before I dive into today's topic, I want to say thank you uh, for providing this amazing opportunity for me to grow through this experience because, because you have uh, such an awesome commitment to your growth. It allows me to keep working the commitment to mine, like I just described in, in detail. And I... I certainly understand and uh, um, fully appreciate how valuable anyone's attention is, right? The time of our lives is just so demanded upon. So thank you so much for coming along with me uh, to 62. You know, I was born in 1962 also. So I don't know, the 62 seems in some way symbolic uh, since I just had my 60th birthday. And so if you haven't registered yet at my website, which is www.samperato.com, please do so, so you can be kept up to date as I share about some new workshops I'm going to be offering, my uh, fingers crossed TED Talk potentially scheduled, and other stuff that's coming from Expedition Self that we've been working on all year, the whole team. I also uh, wanted to take a moment to say thank you to Chris and Liani, who are the producers and the caretakers and the inspiration and all the effort uh, behind Om Times Radio. And I don't know if you've ever listened to any of the other people, uh, hosts that are on, but they're awesome. And uh, Chris and Liani, they do all things Om Times, and they've been uh, uber supportive and carried many of my moments <laughs> in the beginning as I found my way on the show. But beyond that, they care so much about this world in which we live and they expend gobs of heart and effort putting their publication out each month with interesting and substantive interviews and information. And if you're not following the rest of the whole Ohm Times package <laughs> that is a heart steered and heart directed by Chris and Liani, I would really, really encourage you to do so. And I dare say, uh, and maybe I be, and this is just because I don't know more, but I think they're one of the central players in this self-spiritual human potential movement. And I'm, I feel very lucky to be in their sphere of love and possibility. So thank you so much for everything. I know Chris, you're listening as you always are. Uh, I hope Liani is too. So this today is momentous in this particular iteration because it's the last time I get to like, you know, plead with you to call in and uh, talk live for the next couple of months. So it is a good time to call, just say hi, share with me something out of an episode that you were most moved by, or as always, just anything that's happening in your growth process, because I, I would love to hear from you today, kind of in celebration, really. So the number is 202-570-70. Five, seven. This show is uh, today all about uh, what really matters. And I landed here because I was watching an episode of Rings of Power, which is uh, aired on Amazon Prime. And I'm just going to give you a little outtake about the series just so you have some background about it if you're not watching it. I just started kind of watching TV again with some of these awesome series. So uh, it's kind of fun to talk about TV. But anyway, this series uh, brings to the screen for the first time these the heroic legends of the fabled second age of Middle Earth's history. And it's an epic drama that's set thousands of years before the events of J.R.R. Tolkien's The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. And it takes viewers back to an era in which great all the great powers were forged 
when the kingdoms rose to glory and then fell to ruin and unlikely heroes were tested, hope hung by the finest of threads and the greatest villain, this, these are not my words just saying I'm reading that, <laughs> that ever flowed from Tolkien's pen threatened to cover all the world in darkness. Okay, so there's my setup for it. Anyway, in this scene, Poppy Proudfellow has to say goodbye to her friend Nori uh, as she um, makes a choice uh, for her own life. And at first, she can't do it. And she runs and she hides. And then, of course, as Nori is about to leave the village, um, she realizes that she can't let her leave, right, without without hugging her and telling her how she feels about her. And so the scene, oh my gosh, I'm cr I was crying through it. I still could cry through it talking about it. Um, because to me, it's where I want to start about what really matters in this life. And so after we come from break, I'm going to tell you about what I pulled out of that scene and how I think it connects to one of the three things that really matters most. A conscious lifestyle for a mindful life. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Connect at ometimes.com. Ohm Times, creating a more conscious lifestyle. My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. You came across someone struggling with hunger. How would you recognize them? Would you notice an eight-year-old girl who's, who's not excited, excited for, for summer, summer break because she may not be having lunch again until September? or a war veteran who's having a hard time landing a job and getting back on his feet. I am the one in eight Americans who struggle with hunger. I am hunger in America. Hunger can be hard to recognize. Learn why at IamHungerInAmerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Okay, well, we are back. I'm Sam Prado. You're listening to Expedition Self and... Today, we are uh, posing the question and exploring the question about what really matters. So before we went on break, I was telling you a little bit about um, the Rings of Power show and the scene between Nori and Poppy and and that she you know, comes running around the corner as Nori is about ready to leave the village and she, she embraces her and she holds on to her. And of course, the acting was incredible to the point that you don't think they're acting and the tears are flowing and... So to me, this first piece is all wrapped up and embodied in that scene. And it is the, the love and appreciation for someone else, for companionship, for knowing that there is someone who sees you and that you see, who you feel this intense attachment with and know that it, it will break your heart. And in fact, usually your, our hearts get broken when we have this, when they're not around. And even when they are around sometimes, it's it's having a capacity to love that big, that you you want to hold onto them forever, but but you won't because you would never want to stifle or snuff out their life force energy. It's this it's this sense of knowing that only they can fill the space that they fill in your heart, like that no one else feels the same. No one looks the same. No one laughs the same. No one loves the same. Only they 
are the recipient of this particular special connection. Um, there's a an, an intimacy in it, right? So you can have a special connection like I'm describing with not just one because it's the capacity to have it that actually really matters. I hear a lot of times people talk about how spirituality being more evolved and advanced means you become less attached to the physical life we're in. Uh, I'm, I've always pondered that. Like I've never quite figured out where I land in all of that. <laughs> I would say it's kind of one of those side studies I'm in. But when I watched Poppy and Nore, I think, no, no, it's the attachment and the love and the holding on that makes the releasing and the allowing so incredibly powerful and, and the place in the the center between them where there's no separation. There's this oneness. And in the sharing in that mutually at the very same time, I, I wouldn't want to miss this in my lifetime. And the times I felt it and the places I experience it make, make it all worth it. So anytime I get to be I get a chance to be in one of those shared moments. Something <laughs> breaks free in me. I know there's sound effects here. And I become wider and deeper and more, more capable of holding the space for every relationship in my life and for the relationships with for others, right? Because a lot of times there's relationships going on around us that we think don't have anything to do with us. But when we really get this this depth, this place that I'm describing, we start to value it no matter where we see it. So in what matters most, it's this profound connection that you can share with someone else. And one where you're willing to be expressive and vulnerable and find words to describe it. It's, uh, it's one where you're willing to be that real, messy, confused, wrong, and off course, one where you, where you love so much, you're willing to see things about yourself that might actually disrupt something about you that you hold dear or that you hold on to tightly, like being righteous or rigid or, or certain immovable ways of being. So you can call it friendship. You can call it companionship. <laughs> You can call it, I made this word up, say lovership, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. I think that intimacy in relationship is one of the core pillars that without it, no matter how much you accomplish in life, it just can't compare if you don't have this deep sense of intimacy. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't mention, <laughs> you know, true to form, uh, the significance of this deep connection with the self and how they're connected, right? Because in being true to my constant conversation about growth work, I want to take this moment to reiterate that our capacity to be deeply intimate with others is so completely influenced by our capacity to be intimate with ourselves. And, you know, I only have my own lifetime really to use as a reference point. So I can go from when I was young to where I am now and the depth of my feeling for people that I have this kind of connected intimacy with. And I know I wasn't deeply connected to myself as a young child. And so it is, it is marked markedly different. So I have to believe that every time we create a more intimate understanding where we open up those parts we don't like, where we form a new relationship within the self, that that's also creating a capacity to actually cause what I'm describing in our lives with the people that we share our lives with. Right? I've seen some people, right, find intimacy within themselves because they are loved and seen by someone else. Also, so sometimes it works from the outside in, right? Sometimes 
right? Somebody comes along and they see us or they see somebody and that person, even though they haven't found it yet inside, they respond to it and it brings them out and it opens up their world. So in this moment, I'd like you to think about who this person or these people are that you've had this connection with or you've had these moments with. I'll just allow allow their faces to float across your mind's eye. Just just you know like let your unconscious like serve it up. And just notice, notice some things. Are they still in your life? Do you tell them when you have thoughts about them? Do you create these shared moments where they get to be present to your raw feelings, your fresh feelings, your unprocessed sense of being in that moment. And, and if you do think about how you tell them or that you tell them, how do you do that? Right? Is it, is it fit in a structure or does it just come out? Just this ooze, <laughs> ooze out of the moment. And, and when you have taken them for granted, which I don't just know any relationship where that doesn't happen and returned to be with them again. Did you acknowledge it? Were you conscious of it? And then the other thing is, how do you cultivate these intimate exchanges with them? And what, if you've found some people that came across your mind's eye, um, or if there are somewhere you feel like there's been a loss or something that's gone on, which I actually have a couple of people that came to my mind, right? This is those, these are those moments where we can say, well, if what really matters in life is these connected intimate moments, then you could actually get right off this show and you could pick up the phone or you could sit down and write a letter, whether you send it or not, right? So as you allow yourself to scan over your lifetime, now I want you to answer this other question for yourself. What has been made possible because they are in your life or because of the way they connect with you or because of the way they love you? Who are you that you wouldn't be if it wasn't for them? And if you peeled away your shyness or being reserved or, or maybe even just thinking you're too busy and searched for the, the best words, the most excellent words, you know, that, that come to mind when you think of them to describe the gift that you've been given, how would you tell them? What would it sound like? What would it sound like? So gratitude, it matters, right? But it, to me, it folds inside of the other uh things that's, that matter most, right? But you also, as we're going through this conversation, you get to decide what you think has mattered most in your life. But I, I definitely feel like gratitude matters because it, it means that you recognize how many gifts are coming your way all the time. But this kind of gratitude that I'm talking about in terms of intimate connection is actually acknowledging that another soul is extra, is a special one for you, right? It's, it's one that has helped you build the life you have because of, you, of them in some way. And it's not necessarily someone who stays forever, right? Because intimate connection, it's not measured by time. It's measured by depth. It's measured by depth. So, so we, if we could just pause here for a moment. You could say, listen, I know relationships matter, right? They, we already know they matter. We know they're important. But what most of us don't do is we don't put ourselves at the source of actually uh, blossoming it right? We, we, we will do nice things maybe, or we'll send a card. But I'm talking about where you put your heart, your being right there in the center. And you say, I am willing. I am willing to be one with you in this moment of time, because there is no one else for me to be with here. Right? And to actually think about how do you bring yourself 
into these intimate moments where you are willing to shed off the defenses, to shed off the filters, because that's what it takes. You know, I I don't know, it was four or five years ago, I decided that really what I wanted to live was an undefended, unprotected, unfiltered life. And I will, I have to say things actually expanded, like they, they became, uh, I don't know, it's like breathing air into them, right? And then the bubble got bigger and bigger, is that when we talk about how to make this part of our lives, this thing that really matters, which is intimate connection, what we're really talking about is seriously, seriously looking at how defended we are. So being defended like folds in underneath this as well. Okay, so I'd love to hear from anybody in terms of as you play with the question of what you think really matters. All right, so another, the second one of the things that I think really matter um, is that I'm I'm gonna share. um, But before I do, I want you to say to yourself, what has really mattered to you before? Okay, this is like an honest question. When you think about your life and how you show up today, how would you answer that question? What has really mattered? Right? Is it making money? Uh, Is it uh, being a parent? Like, what do you feel like if you had to answer that now, (laughs) before I take you to this next one? What would you say to that? What has actually mattered? So the reason I talk about intimate connection is because for me, when, when, when my life is at its most futile and hopeless, when I, I feel like I just can't generate one more thing for the day out of the dirt, and when I, when I feel like I'm a loser or I'm worthless, what I notice is that this uh, intimate connection makes it better. Right. That's what happens for me. Like it's lasting and something I can trust and that it makes it all feel secondary. And then I feel less alone. And so as I say this, you can see why I would describe why this matters or how much, because this loneliness is what defined most of my days growing up. And the only times when I felt happy was when I got to be intimately connected to someone along the way. Now, I say it's the only time I felt happy, but the other two uh, examples, which I'm having you hang on on the edge of your chair for, those also were places where I could experience this core happiness that came out of my life from the day I was a little, little, little to the day that I, I sit in this chair now. Okay, so what do you think really matters? So my answer to this question, number two, right, is core originality. And what I mean by this is that this place inside where we, it's a place inside where we get to express and uh, feed, right, and expound on uh, our own viewpoint, our own uniqueness, It's the place where we get to celebrate and relish and and bathe in the way we think, the way we feel, the way we process words, and the way we interpret a piece of art, and the way we want to to work, right? It's this it's it's really it's everything that is you so if you go to the last one of you know intimacy you know connected intimacy what we're really saying is that this is the side where it's really about what you bring to a moment like that because it's everything about you that makes makes you the package that you are the whole package that you are not any one piece of it right not carved up So this core originality, to me, is something that you are literally cultivating every single day over your lifetime. And you're giving it a new voice with each turn of the eye or each new activity or each new scenario that you're thrust inside of. It's it's something that is all, all yours. You possess it. 
and and you're the true true source of it and and because of this it's the reminder that as human as we are and as vulnerable and and mortal that we have this innate intrinsic power that always always ceases ceaselessly that is a mouthful exists inside of who we are and it is our originality Right. So that's actually what I'm saying is that to me, our power isn't our ability to be in authority. It's not even our ability to actually, you know, to take action. It lives inside of this uh, constant uh, refiltering and rebuilding and reprocessing of our own uh, original selves. And that the doing of that, the playing with it, the letting it, you know, slip through your fingers and feeling it squish in between your palms and and then throwing it back out, that that experience of exploring your own originality, your own inner world that only you occupy, that that really matters. It matters big time, (laughs) big time, right? And it's the place where our actual power lives. And we get that very confused, right? Because we like to say that power is um, really more about external action. And I'm saying, no, it really comes right from here. All right, when we come back from break, we'll talk some more about that. The best of holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose, to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free, ascendinghearts.com. Imagine yourself being transported to India, to the banks of the Ganga, and an ashram in Rishikesh. Visualize that you are welcome to satsang with an American sannyasi who shares the wisdom of her guru. Your visualization has manifested. Join Sattvi Bhagawati Saraswati for inspiration and transformation every Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern on Om Times Radio. If I could be you. And you could be me. For just one hour. If you could find a way. To get inside. Each other's mind. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk Walk a mile mile in my shoes. shoes. We've all felt left out. And for some, that feeling lasts more than a moment. We can change that. Learn how at belongingbeginswithus.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Walk a mile in my shoes. Okay, I'm back. So I'm Sam Parado. You're listening to Expedition Self. Today, we are talking about what really matters. And before I went to break, I was talking about this idea of our core originality really matters. Now, we live in a world that, for a whole bunch of reasons, likes to make us all the same. Wants us to follow these social rules, wants us to look alike, uh, asks us to defer to things that seem more important to the collective. And I think we can do this better right? It, it will, it's like it will have more power for us when we stake a permanent and immovable claim on our core originality, right? The constant attempt to discover what it is and how it flavors a day. Well, it's a grand use of our time, right? Because what happens is the more we find that power and that originality, the more we can say, yes, that makes sense to me to have that social rule. Yes, I understand how I can help. I have enough of myself to give because I found my core originality to begin with. So there are two things I want to say about this. One is that grabbing on to the labels we assign to our core originality and holding on is not the way to make sure it is strong and tended to. 
You would think it would be, right? Like get a hold of it, make it yours and stick it in the ground forever and ever and ever. But it's not because the very idea that you find something that is true about you and then hold on to it rather than evolving and reshaping it suggests a rigidity. Hmm. Hmm. Might have a little fear in there, a little holding on, right? That doesn't honor your human changeability. And the minute you you attach yourself in that way, you box it in. And the minute you box it in, you suck a bit of the oxygen out of it. And that oxygen is what makes you powerful, right? And believe it or not, you're the one who buys into all of that. So if you can hang in with me here, what I'm saying is that the hunt for your originality is what matters, not what you find there, right? It's the experience of revealing what lies beneath and surprises you that breathes the oxygen and life into the adventure, right? So you can label it when you find it and have fun with that for a little while, right? But then you have to be looking for the next thing because that's actually what produces the movement. So anything you can find, and I mean anything, that helps you explore your own originality, it matters. And it matters then also that you recognize it's not supposed to stay the same because the minute it does, you've kind of left the adventure of finding your core originality. So cosplay, playing the piano, participating in a yodeling group in the Alps, being an actor, gardening, organizing closets, right? Whatever it is that you experience, your own firstness, your own uh, I am the one inside of, this matters. And and the second thing about this uh, pillar of what matters is that it is better if you can notice where the joy and delight are. Maybe even the fun. So the misconception is that whatever is true about your originality, it will bring you joy and delight and be fun. Well, I just have to say, while we're in this conversation, I don't know about that. I think sometimes the way our life goes, we can get a a bad taste for something because it's shoved down our throats because of circumstances or the way someone else plays it out. Uh, I think this about gardening and art for me. You know, art looked one way. It meant I had to create something that looked exactly like, like what I was looking at or the way it looked in my mind. And so I didn't think I was into art. (laughs) Oh boy, was I wrong. Imagine taking 50 years to realize that inside of me, my original core self has an artist's heart and loves art of all kinds. And I'm not really just speaking of what kind of art I can make. I'm talking about the idea that art is part of who I am. And I didn't get access to this until I could peel away the biases and the limiting ideas and the results that I attach to being an artist, right? And so there wasn't a lot of joy going on there. I just felt my critical mind was there. I mean, I really wasn't, you know, uh, getting up and underneath, right? That boiling cauldron of (laughs) self-originality. I was was very, very busy uh, thinking my way through that. I don't know that we always find our originality, right, through thinking. I think thinking has to come along with it. So when you're hunting for your core originality, you're just simply hunting. And you don't have to be an extrovert. And this, I'm going to, I'm taking this as core originality, right, as an extrovert or an introvert, right? You don't have to be an extrovert or an introvert. You can be an introvert for a while, and then you can be very loud, and you can take tons of space and then you can play with being both at the same time. And then you can experiment with trying it with certain people or in various scenarios. You see, I think this idea of how we communicate is very central to our core originality. And I think in that process, we're supposed to be working with uh, streamlining and finding the concentrated version of our truth in there. Right. So it's important that we give ourselves a chance to play lots of different roles and angles. So if you're going to focus on what really matters around your originality, 
Well, then you're going to find that your inner student, the curious part of you, the unconstrained, uh, unruled follower is going to be needed. Going to be needed, right? So all these parts about what really matters, you get to think in more detail, like I'm trying to kind of present today. Like, what is what does it help you get in touch with? How do you get deeper inside of you? Okay, the last of these what matters most examples is around taking care of ourselves, providing, providing what we need to sustain our lives. You know, I think we're supposed to learn about independence. And this leads us to learn about strength and courage and loss and risk and uh, tenacity and self-assuredness. You know, this one is, is kind of challenging, though, because for many, it looks like rules of living, right? You have to be responsible and practical. You have to work, have to, here are all the have tos. And oftentimes you have to work too hard. And you're supposed to follow these rules of life. So you win the game. And I think it gets interwoven, right? This idea of us. Uh, self self care right taking care of ourselves it gets interwoven with this kind of weighty expectation laden stuff that makes us feel inadequate and actually sometimes more incapable so in truth when you think about this independence and self care as something that really matters you're seeding the very thing that does build a life that does build a society and it sets you on the course of personal mastery with the craft of your choice, which is to find meaningful work, right? Something that you find value in, that you can actually make a living and take care of yourself. But we, we tend to come at it uh, fr from it in all the wrong ways. Like we reinforce the fears that go with it because we attach having things and maintaining a lifestyle to the pursuit. <laughs> and of course, if you work enough in this area, you're going to see uh, the role of generosity at play in your life, right? You're gonna make decisions about what you share, how you share it, what you don't want to give up. <laughs> and, and this is gonna produce a growth experience, right? It sounds like this, if I generate something that's tangible, you know, where I take care of myself that I can count on, then what do I do with it? How do I operate in the world? Knowing I can create this kind of life for myself. Like, can I separate my fear enough to create meaningful work? Right? Can I, can I create the time to hone my craft for the right reasons? And, and if I'm really looking at what really matters in life, if, if how I take care of myself matters, and that leads to what my work looks like, how do I, uh, I basically blend in and out of, of the have to versus want to, have to versus want to, right? How do I shift back and back and forth? Because that's really what actually happens. Right. And then, of course, we could ask ourselves, what are the wrong reasons for doing so? What are the wrong reasons for working? In all my time of doing growth work, I have never met anyone who didn't have a pocket of themselves waiting for someone to come along and take care of them. You know, sometimes it was exacerbated by being a child who was forgotten or lived with not enough food. And there was this compensatory conversation at play in the background of making up for what they didn't get. Sometimes it was made bigger because the person bought into some idea of their inadequacy because of a school situation or a competitive thing that where they didn't win. Um, in another case that, you know, the, the person was sickly as a child and, and actually didn't get a chance to push their limits and figure out what they were capable of and what they weren't. And of course, it's such a big thing. And the way our society talks about it, I think it puts a pin in it. Instead of really relishing in this idea of, oh, I'm learning how to take care of myself. I'm learning what I can handle. I'm learning what my limits are. I'm learning where I can take risk. Right? 
our society puts a pin in it because it immediately gets tied to whether or not we're winning, whether we're someone who's successful. And the fears, you know, of not surviving are woven in and through it, all that survival mode, which I talk a lot about. But as part of the three things that I believe really matter, it has to get a place at the table because it's part of having a whole self and getting to know that self. It's got everything to do with being in a body on this earthly plane and engaging with others. So when you think about the three things that matter, and maybe you have five things that matter, but I would say they're intimate connection, core originality, and self-sufficiency. These things that matter produce extraordinary growth for us, and they're at play all of the time. So when we don't have it, or we don't know how to grow them, well, then we're going to be thrust into this void, right? And, and it's going to produce some stuff for us, like feelings and awareness. And sometimes this produces a lot of dark stuff, resentment and loss, hurt and disappointment, rage. And then we have to grow through that. And when we do have it, like we really do get it, this, the, these three things, that we can get all caught up in just settling there. And before we know it, something changes. And we're like, wait. Wait, 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 where'd that go? See, I think the value of looking closely at what matters most is because you can start to focus. I mean, really focus on the value of the things that are, that comprise your life, your everyday life and your thoughts. It helps you really zero in on where, where you're going to pay attention. And it helps you to question the depth and intimacy in your relationships. And it helps you to think about how you're relating to your original self. And then it has you rethink how you're living and making that living and the motives and the come froms and the deeper drivers that had to do with those core needs I always love to talk about and how they were met and how they weren't. But it starts with actually stopping, right? And saying, wait a minute, what does really matter? At the end of the day, when I really look at what is important for me to engage in, what really matters? So I want to say uh, thank you uh, for being with me today and uh, for being with me on my 62 shows. And I think I have a minute left. I was just going to read you a poem that I wrote inside of my own exploration of originality. Um, and I think I'm going to get it in before I, I end up at break. Let's see if I can do this. It's called uh, True Nothing. Okay. Not all moments must produce output into the world. Not all awareness must be useful. Loving a stuffed animal simply brings happiness. Being willing to be nothing stems from my ego self. True nothing is a gift given to my soul self. I am thus free to come and go in and through this lifetime. I do not tend to this body in the way I could care. I see breath as having a start and a stop. But the midpoint between holds great mystery where my interest is piqued. Separation is everywhere when witnessed through my mind's way of knowing. I move towards my next level of soul learning now, being willing to find true nothing. All right. Well, that's it. I actually shared my own poem as a culmination of my 62 <laughs> hours, which is kind of cool. And um, I just want to say thank you again. Have a wonderful week. And I encourage you to find all the cool ways to go inside.